So without coming off as some kind of guru preachy freak or something, the process by which you're able to sort of enter a state of flow, if you will, or grace is another term for it, I suppose, whereby you're not trying to force too much of what's going on in your day and you're just sort of anticipating the possibility that things are not necessarily going to go the way you initially planned, but they're going to go the way they're supposed to go and they're going to end up eventually going well. Maybe not necessarily that specific day, but in general and quite often that day. And when you apply this sort of flow, grace, if you will, approach to things, my experience lately has been that you, not always, but quite often, can end up having dinner at a spot like this, exactly like what you're looking at here. Because a few things, as you saw, earlier, didn't go the way I had planned, certainly, with the day today, but, whatever, just go with it, and this is how things proceed. Let's carry on and see if this holds true. Got to get back to the highway. Really encouraging in some ways, while well, we enjoy a backcountry dinner, is the fact that I dropped my uh, iPhone in the water and it was fully submerged. I quickly grabbed it, retrieved it, and as you can see, that was just moments ago from the footage you're viewing, We've got crackers, turkey, and cheese. Uh, for the first course of this incredible cuisine we enjoy. Mm. Nothing tastes better than when you're back country. So good. Second course. Mm. some old school ginger ale. There are two planes crossing paths in the sky. Right there. Well, greatly varying altitudes, but it's still neat to see that. Course number three of this delectable culinary ensemble. As a kid, I was lucky enough to go back into Lake Country in central Ontario. I thought it was northern Ontario at the time, but it's central. I thought we were driving halfway through the Himalayas with the childhood scale I was applying to these annual summer trips with my father and my brother. Um, and they were wonderful in some ways, but uh, not ideal in others because of uh, 
various challenges people were facing. But this was Canada Dry Ginger Ale. It was a part of the experience every time. So it's a retro thing, a regression thing as well. Um, to some fond childhood memories, doing things not all that dissimilar to this. And the dessert is homemade chocolate. Nut banana bread. Mm -mm -mm. Adios. Yeah. Okay, there's something walking. You can hear the footfalls back there. No crises. Biggins. We're going back that way. safely back in my beautiful red buddy the iphones are waterproof and they should be the, for what you pay for these things as i said i just dropped this thing in the lake and completely submerged scooped it out as quickly as possible dried it off as much as i could uh back at the car i went to plug it in to voila and i got a message saying there's uh liquid detected in the uh, whatever that thing is the plug thing or whatever the phone gives you a message saying there's liquid in this part of the phone unplug that part of the phone and let it um dry out it might take a few hours so you know what while i'm i dried it all out while i'm talking to you sorry about the finger in the shot they're not the most professional but that's okay i'm gonna plug this in while i'm talking to you and no, it says liquid has been detected in the thing. Unplug it and let it dry out. So um, I can't plug my phone in for a few hours. So that's so far anyway. That's lovely. That's so far anyway, the only consequence I faced to dropping a new iPhone 13 Pro Max into a lake is don't plug it in for a few hours while the thing dries out. Let's carry on and try and get back to the highway before dark because then it's no fun. Not as fun. It's always fun, but not as fun. Let's keep going. This is the phase of these videos where I always think I'm done. And then I end up gaining access to scenery like what's behind me here. Again, this is a a clear cut essentially that's regrowing. They they replant them and they come back, but once they start to come back, it makes for some incredible scenery. And when I get back to the highway, Highway 97, that goes to Kelowna or Merritt, I'm 20 minutes, I would say, from Kelowna. The speed limit's 110. Most people, standard is uh, about 10 over the speed limit in that area, so. I go with the speed limit because I'm in a little putt putt. Um, I don't even, I don't even, ramble about speed limits. I don't even go full speed. I go about 100 kilometers an hour. I think I'm about 20 minutes and I'm in downtown Kelowna from the lake we just enjoyed from this. It's an absolutely incredible place to provide access like it does. And Kelowna also has some pretty good urban experiences on offer as well it has everything that the big cities have in in the the negative sense as well toronto montreal vancouver Kelowna has absolutely everything that's going on in those cities just generally on a smaller scale um 
but it's all happening there as well. It's a small city, basically. But I had to stop, take a peek at that. I'll probably get a couple more of these on the way back. Keep saying I'm done for the day. And then I see a little spot back here that I absolutely have to go explore. Hats available at iwillwander.com, by the way. Along with a wide range of attire and print posters by yours truly. Look at this one, you see the sweat in there? See, to me, that's a quality of life indicator. means I'm having a good week or month because I have the time and the opportunity to go and get a good sweat on somewhere. So uh, I'll show you in a sec here. I just found another spot that uh, we're going to go explore. Quick, quick, quick. My gut says there's some really good sunset shots in some really good sunset shots and footage coming up this little trail here so let's go <laughs> gas stations right there highway you can hear is up here they've got fences along many of the major highways that go through the isolated areas of Canada and that is to minimize the occurrence of livestock on the highways because that causes serious grief and right here you've got this one spot where I guess if uh, it or they need to get through there's a car coming in on um they can make their way through um this little spot right here i guess i don't really know what's going on there not the reason i pulled over before i essentially get back to civilization look how dirty red buddy is oh ooh, ooh, i cleaned this girl yesterday no the reason i pulled over was that um i um, if you'll recall, the second is a truck. Um, if you'll recall, that's gorgeous. Pulled out a little bit of ordnance when I was back. A little more isolated. Gonna put that away. So I'm not dealing with why are you so anxious to know why I'm carrying this knife on my hip officer if I get pulled over. Obviously. Put the thing away in a um, safe spot. Don't wear the damn thing on your hip when you're walking around. Uh, an urban area. Elkhart gas station. Elkhart Road goes back to these incredible lakes. There's three or four just back where, from where I was there. Gelato, Galato, whatever that one was. Um, if you had a vehicle with any clearance at all, wouldn't be an issue. Getting a little nasty for my old girl here, so decided not to carry on. Plus I was losing the light. And maybe if we're really bored, we'll hang out here for a day and see if we can watch a bear or moose try and make its way through the, uh, the trap door. If that's what it is. I don't even know what that is. You assume, right? Or if people as well end up in a circumstance where they need to get through there. Although you could you could hop that thing pretty easy. Let's keep going. Always say it's my last one. There's always more. So let's see what transpires here. <laughs> 